What do you mean where you're doing the same thing she was doing? What are you doing? Well, I'm doing it from the other end. She had an equation and put it into a graph. Well, I already have a graph, real data, and I'm trying to find an equation which would give me the graph the way she used it. Iterated it. It's called an algorithm. Can you save every year? Read those change. You can't keep tabs on everything. It's not nature in a box, but it isn't necessary to know the details. They're all put together, it turns out the population is obeying a mathematical rule. The goldfish are? Yes. No. The numbers. It's not about the behavior of fish, it's about the behavior of numbers. This thing works for any phenomenon which eats its own numbers. Since epidemics, rainfall average, common prices, it's a natural phenomenon in itself. Spooky. Does it work for grouse? I don't know yet. I mean, it does undoubtedly, but it's hard to show. There's more noise with grouse. Noise? Distortions. Interference. Real data is messy. There's a thousand acres of moorland that had grouse on it, always did, until about 1930. But nobody counted the grouse. They shot them. So you count the grouse they shot. But burning the heather interferes. It proves the food supply. A good year for foxes interferes the other way. They eat the chicks. And then there's the weather. It's all very, very noisy out there. Very hard to spot the tune. Like a piano in the next room. It's playing your song, but unfortunately, it's out of whack. Some of the strings are missing, and the pianist is toned up and drunk. I mean, the noise. Impossible! What do you do? You start guessing what the tune might be. You try to pick out the noise. You try this, you try that, you start to get something. It's not vague, but you start putting in notes, which are missing or not quite the right notes. And bit by bit, dum da dum dum dear Valentine. Dum da dum dum to you. The lost algorithm. Yes, I see. And then what? I publish. Of course, jolly good. That's the theory. Girls are bastards compared to goldfish. Why did you choose them? The game books, my true inheritance, 200 years of real day on a plate. Somebody wrote for everything in the shop? Well, that's what a game book is. I'm only using them from 1870, when butts and beaters came in. You mean the game books collected on the scene this time? Oh yes, further. No. I promise you. I promise you. Not a schoolgirl living in a country house in Derbyshire in 18-something. Well, what was she doing? She was just playing with the numbers. In reality, she wasn't doing anything. Cut them, raise, kissing. Yes. And throwing one's arms around Mrs. Chater. Yes. Now, for math, that's theorem. I saw this much. You sh I hope you are ashamed. Aye, my lady. Yes, if you won't teach me these things, how will I ever know? Ah, yes, I am ashamed. One of them is a sexual congress, which is the insertion of the male genital organ into the female genital organ for purposes of procreation and pleasure. Now, if you match that theorem, by contrast, asserts that when x, y, and z are whole numbers, each raised to the power of n, the sum of the first two can never equal the third, when n is greater than two. <laughs> Nevertheless, that is the theorem. It's disgusting and incomprehensible. When I am grown and practice myself, I shall never do so without thinking of you. Thank you very much, my lady. Was Miss Chater down this morning? No. Tell me more about sexual congress. There's nothing more to say about sexual congress. Is it the same as love? No, it's, it's much nicer than that. I'm teaching, Jellyby. Beg your pardon, Mr. Marsh. Mr. Chater said it would be urgent for you to read his letter. Oh, very well. Thank you. Thank you. You told him to bring me your answer. My answer? Well, my answer is that as my custom and duty to his lordship, I am engaged to the cause of the twelve, the education of his daughter. <laughs> However, when I finish, Mr. Chater is still there, I will see upon him in... in the gun room. Very well, sir. All is done, sir. Thank you. What's for dinner, Jellyby? Bold ham and cabbages, my lady, along with rice pudding. Oh, goody! Well, so much Mr. Noakes puts himself forward as a gentleman. If he's lost for the picturesque, a visionary can move mountains across lakes. But in the scheme of the garden, he's as a servant. When you stir your rice pudding, Septimus, the spoonful of jam uh, spreads itself around, making red trails like a picture of a meteor in my astronomical atlas. When you stir it backwards, the spoon, uh, spoon of jam does not come together again. It, indeed, this uh, pudding does not notice and continues to turn pink again. Do you think this is odd? No. I do. You cannot stir things apart. No more you can. Time must needs run backward. And since it will not, we must stir our way onward, mixing as we go. Disorder out of disorder into disorder, until pink is complete. Unchanging and unchangeable. And we are done with it forever. This is known as free will or self-determination. 
Septimus, do you think God's an Etonian? An Etonian? Almost certainly, I'm afraid. We must ask your brother to make his first inquiry. No, Septimus, a Newtonian. Am I the first to think of this? Mm, no. I've not said yet. If everything from the first planet to the smallest atom of our brain acts according to Newton's law of motion, what becomes a free will? No. God's will? No. Sin? No. Farewell. <laughs>